For those of you that have followed us for a while, you may be aware that we have a champion of the greater good who lives in our channel. That's right. Nick is playing the new Tau Codex versus, of all people, a real challenge, Steven Box and his world leaders. It's new Tau versus world leaders on this episode of 40K in 40 Minutes. Greetings, 40K fans. Your host, JT The Voice here, and man, oh man, have we got a game for you today. Steven Box from Vanguard Tactics has come all the way across the pond to face Nick and the new Tau Codex in the Retaliation Cadre. This should be a battle for the ages. The new Tau Codex is here for 10th edition, and I gotta say, I'm pretty excited. Hey, I'm Steven Box from Vanguard Tactics, and for some reason I've been invited back to play on, and I cannot wait to play Nick once more and try and defeat the Tau. I am really, really excited that Steven is in the studio today. I can't wait to smush him like a bug. Nick's Retaliation Cadre consists of Commander Farsight and Commander Shadow Sun, a Commander in Cold Star with the new Grenade Rack Enhancement, a Breacher Team, a Strike Team, a Devilfish, some broadside battle suits, sunforge battle suits, star scythe battle suits, and fire knife battle suits. Crisis suits have different roles now. Talk about a fantastic change. He has a squad of crew carnivores, some pathfinders, a riptide, some stealth suits, a vestment stingwing squad, and the Yavara battle suit. I'm really excited to see what these new types of crisis battle suits do. They've got more defined roles than they have in previous codexes, so now you can have close range, mid range, or long range depending on which crisis suits you take. All of my battle suits get bonuses the closer I am to the enemy. It's the epitome of the high risk, high reward gameplay that uh, I love to play. I'm gonna dominate the shooting phase, and he's gonna dominate the close combat phase, so if he gets into my units, they are all dead. So the thing I love most about the World Eaters is that they are just combat raged. And for me, combat is my favorite phase of the game. Steven's list consists of Karn the Betrayer and Lord Invocatus. He's got two squads of Jackals, two squads of Corn Berserkers and Rhinos, a three-man squad of eight bound, a second three-man squad of eight bound, a six-man squad of eight bound, three exalted eight bound, and six more exalted eight bound. Talk about blood for the blood god. That is an aggressive, in your face, gonna stop your list. Against Tau, this should be interesting. I've got Khan the Betrayer. He's my favorite character in the lore. And I'm very excited to play against a new codex. This is gonna be awesome. We are playing Take and Hold Classic. Hold one objective for five, two for 10, and three for 15. Supply lines, so if you hold your home objective on a four up, you'll get an extra command point at the start of turn. And sweeping engagement. So, long deployment edges with an angle. The time of man is over. It is the time for the greater good. This episode is brought to you by Warhammer Combat Cards. Hey, Steve, uh, I think we're ready for your interview. Yeah, give me a second. Yeah, but yeah, yeah um, we just like to get it while it's fresh. She's just playing combat cards. Did you get the new Shadow Sun? Watch this, little cheeky tactics move. Yeah. Straight in. Combat cards. Here comes my bloodthirster! Attack! <laughs> this piece is too good. I'm, I'm already eating you yours. Go, go for it. What about the power pole? Should you just play this? Yeah, yeah. Steven, I can't blame you for not wanting to tear yourself away from combat cards. I absolutely love it. It's a fantastic way to get your Warhammer fix on the go. I'm really excited for some of the amazing new releases coming, including Shadow Sun herself. She is the fifth and latest Supreme Commander, each released in line with the Games Workshop 10th Edition Codexes. Combat Cars is also releasing a new Battle Force, so keep a lookout for the new Crute Hunting Pack next week, as well as a new Combat Patrol, plus any new heavy metal painted miniatures released. If Games Workshop does it, Combat Cards also does it, faster than any other game. But that's not all. Combat Cards even has another offer for you, our viewers. If you enter the redeem code EXPLOSIONS in the setting menu in-game, you will get 40 plasma, 40 coins, and 40 Tau cards. That's right. Our resident explosion enthusiast, Tau Nick, gets his own redemption code. I can't wait to hop on combat cards and reach Holy Terra and maybe even win the season. Play on with us and combat cards. Steven, welcome to the studio. Excited to have you back. Nick, I am very excited to be here. I'm excited. We're playing with the new codex. It's going to be awesome. Tau, my favorite army. We've already rolled for who deploys first. You can yeah. start. Then you can see where I'm going to shoot me. 
So when I'm playing against Tao, typically what I want to be trying to do is lock them in combat as quickly as I possibly can, close down their firing lanes, and then make sure I'm using terrain to my advantage to hide. Steven has chosen to run Karn all on his own. He's got Lord Invocatus with that six-man eight-bound squad. All of his exalted eight-bound are in deep strike, and he's got his Berserkers and his Rhinos as expected. Looks like Nick is putting Farsight with those Sunforge Melta suits in deep strike. He's got the Cold Star Commander with Star Scythe Flamer suits. The Vespid are in Deep Strike, his Broadsides are in Reserve, and his Breachers are inside his Devilfish. Right, I'm going to start with my A-Bound. I think I'm going to start with my unit of Breachers. Rhinosaurus. May I just say, your army is beautiful. The Fire Knife Crisis Suit Squad with an Enforcer Commander. And to be clear, all of these explosions and stuff like that, they are just decorative jackals. Riptide. Rhino. With Khan the Betrayer in, as well as the 10, but he's separate. Oh, so he's not in a unit. You know the Fire Warriors? Fire Warriors have a new interesting ability. If they hit a target, that target is minus one till the next command phase to hit. Shadow Sun. Eight bound. These are infiltrators. I've got three more eight bound to put down, and then that's me. The Star Scythe battle suits. Devara is gonna have to go back here. My Croot. We have a cool new ability to sticky objectives. Last deployment for me, I have a unit of Pathfinders. And we call this a hill, correct? Taking a look at player deployment here, aggressive is the word that I would use. Steven needs to close now and close fast, and the Berserkers need to get in and do their work as soon as they possibly can. Nick, however, wants to get positioned and shoot, maybe killing a Rhino or two and stuffing those Berserkers in their own zone. Tau Nick's got a lot of guns, and they can really end this game quickly. So last time you were here, you didn't win one of these. It's out of these victory dice. You can only win them by winning a game of 40K on play on tabletop. So I'm just gonna put these right here. We're also using the new anniversary dice that are available from Baron of Dice right now, and you can go buy your own set to support the channel. Half orange, half white, and the half dark, half white. They're very unique. I haven't seen any like this. You can get your own from baronofdice.com. Link in the description below. Are we gonna see more flex rolls today? Oh, absolutely. Because we're gonna roll to see who goes first. I kinda want you to first. Oh, I need to go roll lower. No! I was really kind of hoping he'd go first. I want him to come out. I want him to come closer. All my guns are pretty short range and I get bonuses if I get close to him. Okay, so I'm going second. That's not really what I wanted. I've got all my scout moves though and I think I can kind of play it quite cagey and use terrain to my advantage here to hide. Scout moves, my first scout move. What do you have scout moves? Everything. Your entire army has scout moves? Apart from the rhinos. Scout move for the crew. They're just gonna move up. So I'm just gonna actually put my Pathfinders over here. Tactical scout backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Steven is backing up into cover with most of his scout moves as Nick is going to be going first. He's really looking to weather Nick's shooting turn one. Should be interesting to see how the new Tau Codex shoots. One model on the objective. Okay, at the start of the battle round, I need to do my Blessings of Corn. Essentially, depending on what I roll, I can pick some different abilities. Blessings of the Blood God, Steven has got advanced in charge as well as feel no pain for his army. That means on his turn, he's going to be coming for Nick. Good luck, sir. Let's do this. I really want a first turn! On a four up, I get an extra command point. Start of turn one, Nick gets an extra command point for supply lines. Because you hold the objective in your own deployment zone. Draws tempting target and area denial. Well, I think I'm going to tempt you with this one here. That one there? Yeah, I'm going to tempt you with that one. And then it is time for the movement phase. Devil first and Breachers look to take down some Jackals. You've done a really good job hiding. I'm going to move the crew onto the objective. Crew are going to advance uh, with a one. All of this firepower is useless. 
Crisis suit's really just shuffling about. He doesn't have a lot of shots. Shooting phase. It's gonna be very short, unfortunately. <laughs> Pathfinders, they're gonna be guided by the stealth suits into your rhino in the back there. The guided Pathfinders have managed no wounds with their rail rifles. That's disappointing. Fire Warriors now into the 8-bound, and Nick's really just trying to suppress them here. It's a new Tau rule for Fire Warriors, giving their target minus one to hit. Okay, I'm fine. That's okay, I hit you. You're now minus one to hit anything else until my next turn. And then the miss, the missiles, shoo, miss everything. Breezers into the Jackals now, 30 dice on twos. <laughs> Barely manages to kill the squad, but losing only the Jackals really isn't that huge. It will keep Steven from stickying that objective in his command phase next turn, however. Delfish still can shoot. He's gonna fire his one-shot secret missiles into the Rhino. All the rest of his piddly guns into the jackals. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Piddly guns first. Yeah. From the drones, hit once, doesn't wound. Okay. And then from the accelerated burst cannon, ooh, we have much better. Three hits, becoming two wounds at minus one. Five plus four pains, one dead. The two seeker missiles into the rhino, two force. We got one, strength 14. It's not a wound. Your turn. Solid turn for Nick, scores both his secondaries, five on tempting target, three on area denial, eight points, and still at two command points. Steven's turn one now, and the Jackals have stickied his home objective, and he's pulled secure no man's land with assassination. So my card draw is definitely doable this turn. The issue is this does make me play a little bit more aggressive than I would have liked to. Steven also gets an extra command point this turn. We both sit a three. Army-wide advance and charge could be a big crashing of bodies into the Tau lines here. I'm gonna start off first of all by moving my Rhinosaurus. Rhino pushes forward, does not disgorge the Berserkers. Three-man eight-bound looking to smash some crew. A three-man eight-bound squad adjusting to hide from some overwatching breachers. Invocatus into six eight-bound advance to within range of the breachers and the devilfish. Oh, a one on the advance of his rhino. Not great. Berserker wow. shooting phase. <laughs> that's funny. That's that's really funny. Berserkers, corn, world leaders shooting. <laughs> The charge phase. Your favorite phase. Rhinosaurus with the Berserkers in charge. This unit here of Croot. The eight bound are in as well. Second Rhino also charges in. Three man eight bound in the breachers. That's going to shut down Overwatch. Invocatus and friends into the Devilfish and the breachers. Where to start first? Rhinos get one crew, but the eight bound now, and those space chickens are deep fried and served up crispy. It is your objective. Now over to here. Steven is using For the Blood God for a command point, gaining sustained hits for the rest of the turn in combat. Eight bound into the two units, Devilfish first. Devilfish takes some wounds, and down it goes. Do I explode on a six? Here we go. No. Rest of the eight bound squad into the breachers now. Six of them are dead. This unit now is going to pile in. Three more eight bound in the last squad, and he's chewing them up without even his sergeant. Good gravy. Five secure no man's land, five assassination. That's 10 total points for Steven. 10 to eight at the end of turn one. Turn two. Are you ready? No. Overwhelming force to deploy teleport armors. My secondaries, not bad. Deploy teleport armors, my Vespid can deep strike behind his lines and overwhelming force. I just gotta kill stuff on objectives. Blessings of corn are advanced charge and feel no pain. That is super strong. Nick has jumped up to five command points this turn to Stevens three. Five points on primary, sees a 13 to 10 lead temporarily. I'm gonna start off with an advance move from these fireworks. This is a bit cheeky. If I get a three on the advance, I can get enough guys in range of this objective yeah. to steal it from you. On the advance roll! Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> what are you eating? Fish. Get out of here! Get out of here! Ha <laughs> ha!
Big number. Bonuses if I get within six inches. You know what? I've got a plethora of command points. I'm gonna spend one of them to get better than a two. <laughs> no! Why is it a two? The Yavara also moves forward. Stealth suits are being sneaky sneaky here to try to guide some units and deny some disembarks from the Rhino. Shadow Sun holding firm to her own objective. Vespids deep strike into Steven's deployment zone. This is the turn, everything's coming in. And they are gonna deploy teleport armors. I'm gonna spend two command points, you know. Two command points for Nick on the shortened blade. Farsight and his unit of Sunforge battle suits. Nick can deep strike within three inches, just not charge. Solid stratagem that. He's down to two command points, but that unit is in close. This was a unit that advanced. On a five up, I get the command point back from Shadow Sun. My last reinforcements. Broadsides are in as well. I'm gonna rapid ingress. Steven spends a command point in rapid ingress. His six exalted eight bound are in and are gonna be a real problem for Nick next turn. Let's fire everything. Pathfinders guide the broadsides into a rhino and one wound left. Lastly, the missile drone's attached to it. <laughs> this never ending. No, this is tough shooting phase, welcome to it. Hits you five times, wounds you twice, three times. And ignoring cover, no, you just need to roll all fours. Yeah. Oh, I saw it. We forgot to do your god thing. So my 11 feel no pains. No! Just one, it's not enough, he dies! Yes! Oh, betrayed. Do I explode? No. How many guys are inside that? 11. Oh no, the Rhino can't ignore damage with field pains and it's gone. One berserker dies to the flaming wreckage. And where is Karn? He's right here. Yvara guided by the stealth suits into the berserkers. Kills three. Torchstar Gambit for one command point, and the Yavara as a battle suit can make a normal move. That's a super cool new strat. Riptide guiding Farsight's unit. Arrowcan protocol for a command point to get sustained hits versus the Berserkers. Farsight manages to kill three himself. Two Berserkers left in the squad. Those two left are gonna be killed by this Riptide. His heavy burst cannon hitting on force. Five wounds at minus one, they do two damage each. Four up. Oh no. Oh no, first one dead, second one dead. Not a single feel no pain was rolled that turn. Down go the berserkers to the riptide, but that sure took a lot. Fire knife crisis battle suits. They're gonna fire everything into this unit holding the objective. If I can kill one, I can take the objective away from you. They're gonna be supported by these orange battle suits over here. Plasma first, hits you twice. Plasma strike eight, just one. Invulnerable save. No, 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 no. Oh, he's already gone and caught it. The commander with his plasma. He misses. Oh, I had to reroll ones. That's the fire knife's ability. That hits. And that wounds. Another five up. Oh, oh double sixes! Missiles. Eight bound are dead, but three hazardous wounds for the commander for his troubles. Commander unfortunately goes down to four wounds remaining. From the Pathfinders into the Rhino. Rhino takes two wounds for the Pathfinders and a few more from the suit commander. My stealth suits are gonna fire everything to the Rhino. Big melt a shot. A miss. Burst cannons hitting on fours, fives, yeah. nothing. <laughs> All right, that is the end of my turn. Another good turn for Nick. Five on deploy homers, three on overwhelming fours, puts him to 21 to 10 as we head to Steven's turn two. Steven has pulled cleanse and behind enemy lines. That's doable. He's also pulled a bonus command point. Five points on primary, 21-15 for Nick. All right, so we're gonna kick off, first of all, we're gonna advance the Jackals. Looks like the Jackals are going on a bug hunt. Those Vespin are in trouble. You can advance and charge, ah! Lord Invocatus and his squad advancing. I think that Riptide is dead on its feet. Eight bound are gonna pop some Pathfinders. Khan's gonna advance, yeah. And there's the bait. Nick choosing his Yavara and overwatching Karn. <clears throat> I mean, Karn. <gasps> That's enough to kill you. <gasps> Command rerolling his failed save. Steven keeps him alive for now. Can he weather the small arms fire though? He does. Yes. One wound left. He lives with one wound. His advance roll is three. <laughs> Karn. 
Run! Berserker babies. The Berserkers are going to attempt to tie up the Yavara, if not kill it outright. Eight bound. Oh, we've got more Deep Strikers. Exalted. Nick has also left me a nice little gap to bring in my Exalted Eight Bound. Rhino cleansing that single objective. That's all for the shooting phase. Just a cleanse, all he needs. Charge phase, Jackals into your Vespid. The Eight Bound into the Strike Team. Exalted Eight Bound mid table, go after Farsight Squad. Now, Lord Invocatus and friends into the Riptide. Exalted eight bound out of deep strike fail. Berserk is in. Karn into the Pathfinders. The we'll start with that, you know that. Oh, wow. The eight bound are doing their best teppanyaki chef impression. Absolutely fine dicing those fire warriors. Blessings of the Blood God for a command point. Lethal hits in melee for the rest of the phase. That could be big. I've now got warp blades. Steven spending another command point on for the skull throne for plus one to wound. The sergeant completely misses though, but the regular eight bound now down the riptide. Just want to pile in three to there. Exalted eight bound in a farsight squad now. Squad wipe, farsight on six wounds left. Okay, so we're gonna go over here now with the jackals and we're just gonna pile in three. Oh wow, the jackals have taken the vestment down to a single model left. Your best friend over there, Karn the Betrayer, with that one freaking wound left. He missed twice. Karn kills six pathfinders, not enough. There's four left. And I'm just gonna pile in, you never know. Will they take the Betrayer down? I've got one last big fight, Berserkers with the Eviscerators. Now these are the much heavier weapons, hitting on threes. Berserkers into the Yavara, only three wounds. I am down to 12 wounds remaining. The Yavara does get to fight back into those Berserkers. One Berserker only goes down. Can you kill Khan the Betrayer? Four Pathfinders. I mean, if they do it, it's amazing. I got four dice, hitting on fives, wounding on fives, then you gotta save on threes. It's not gonna happen, but I would love to see it. I hit you once, that's all I need. I need a wound out of five, come on! No! Karn lives! Karn! I will pile in, I might as well fight. Bunch on fives. One. One wound. Save. Oh no, that's on a pain. Feel it both, down to a wound. Big, big turn from Steven. Three on cleanse, three on behind enemy lines. Still has a command point, but more importantly, we've got a tie game, folks, after two. 21 21. Blood for the Blood God roll looks like six up, feel no pain, as well as advance a charge again. So I get a command point, beginning my phase, going up to one. And then on a four up, I'm going to get another one. Oh, I do not. No prisoners and investigate signals for Nick. And Pathfinders fail their battle shock test. 26 21 in favor of Nick. Those stealth suits are going to go move back just to be wholly within nine as well. And investigate signals over there. Vespid fall back from the jackals to unstick Steven's home objective. Star Scythe suits fall back from Lord Invocata squad. Farsight's in to help out with Yavara's objective. Pathfinders risk desperate breakout from Karn. I lose none. They'll stay still for heavy. Shadow Sun repositioning to help with her aura. Shooting phase. Shooting phase now, and the Yavara is guiding the fire knife suits into Invocata squad, but only kills two. Broadside split fire, long range into Invocatus and short range into Karn. That's three dead eight bound. And then the rest into Karn, of course. The two plasma twin link guns. I hit twice. Don't kill Karn. Oh, wounded you once, twin linked. Wounded you once, I drank nine. So you would have wounded on the two. Oh, well then two wounds. Yep. Four ups. 
No, three damage each. Karn has been eliminated. Oh no, Karn is finally dead. That's a big threat removed from his deployment zone. Shadow Sun's gonna go next. Fire everything into these guys. See if I can't kill him. Shadow Sun now kills another eight bound. Crisis battle suits are gonna be supported by the stealth suits in the back. They get to reroll once to wound. Fire everything into these guys. Eight flamers that are gonna be strength five and EP two. A lot of D6 flamer shots. 27 flamer shots. Oh my sweet and low, that is ridiculous. 27 five ups, we're rolling once. You know what, that's not bad. 11 at minus two. Five ups, three save, single damage. Ferno pains are five up again. Oh, oh the fail no pains. That's rough. Feel the pains are on point though, only one dead. Nick using the Torch Star Gambit for a chance to do mortals because of the grenade rack enhancement, and he's out of command points. It's gonna let me to move after shooting everybody on the objective, and then I get a free grenade stratagem, essentially, because I flew over top of you and dropped a bunch of bombs on you. It's one of the new enhancements, it's kind of fun. Six dice, four ups, mortal wounds. I did one. <laughs> so no pain, I'm okay. The Avara's gonna go next. Me supported by Farsight guided into these Exalted Ape Bound. Flamer, split firing. It's minus one to Ballistical, but who cares? Because he's got a Flamer into the Berserkers in range with him. Across the field, into here. It's got Blast, plus one to hit. The Blast weapon. Oh, it's D6 plus one, plus one for Blast. Yeah. So three dice. Uh, hits you all three times though, okay. and wounds you all three times. Yeah. Minus two, three damage each. Five ups. We'll go through. First one is dead. Second one is alive with a wound, and then he will then die. So two dead. I mean, that's not bad for a one-shot yeah. weapon. Yeah. And then the Flamer into the Berserkers. 10 Flamer shots. Three dead Berserkers as well. Hazardous check, okay. Two shots into the Exalted Eight Bound from Farsight. Hits once, no rerolls unfortunately. That has a wound, minus three. I'm okay. That's my shooting phase. Farsight's gonna charge in like a hero. Farsight with the charge into the Berserkers. That's the only charge that makes sense. So, Farsight. Farsight is gonna strike, so he gets four attacks, hitting on twos, hits them all. Farsight kills two Berserkers. Berserkers into the Yavara manage to strip four more wounds off of it, but the Yavara stomps a Berserker down, and that's it for Nick's fight phase. Well, that was my turn. Taking away your home objective. I've taken the center objective. And in Nick's turn three, he's got two points on investigate signals, four points on no prisoners, 32 to 21 in his favor as we head to Steven's turn three. Steven's will capture enemy outpost and defend stronghold. Capture enemy outpost could be quite challenging. I'm gonna spend a CP here to auto pass this battle shock check because I don't want to risk it. 10 points on primary, 32, 31 for Nick. I regain a wound on my rhino. Always forget that rule. Advancing the Jackals. Jackals again on a bug hunt for that lone Vespid. Come here! They're like, we will get you! <laughs> this unit of eight bound are gonna advance. Eight bound are abandoning their objective to help clear out the midboard. Apoplectic Frenzy to advance the Exalted 8-bound an automatic 6 inches. Nick chooses to overwatch and kills two Exalted 8-bound. Yes! I can't believe I've just lost two models. <laughs> That's the end of my movement phase. Are you gonna do some shooting attacks? Rhino shooting some Pathfinders. And actually kill some. Hey, we're leaders killed something in the shooting phase. That's pretty cool. Charge phase. 8-bound into the Star Scythe suits. Wow, that's hard to say. Three-man unit of Exalted into the Star Scythe suits as well. Rhino charges the Yavara. Invocatus into the Fire Knife suits. The single Exalted also hits the Fire Knife suits. Over here, into the Vespid. Surround him. Combat phase. Right, we're gonna kick off first of all with the Jackals. Jackals, kill the Vespid. Exalted 8 bound now, we're gonna uh, attack into your unit of Star Scythe Crisis suits. So the paired chain fists from the sergeant in that squad. One miss. Strength 14, so twos, five at AP three, please. On sixes, got none. I'm gonna go for the Eviscerator this time, so it's six attacks a model. And then I'm wounding on threes here, re-rolling ones because of the other unit of 8 bound, give me re-roll ones. Nice. 
Seven, please. Uh, AP two, two damage. On fives this time. Three. Cold Star Commander still lives. The Exalted wipe the Star Scythe suits, regular eight bound into the Commander. Got him. Now just pile in. Center belongs to Corn. Rhino. Two hits. No wounds. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm not. I'm ready. I'm not. We're going to go with Lord Invocatus now into the Fire Knife Zeus. Can he make up for last time? No, he Come can't. On. No he way. Won. I get the extra attacks from the Lance. Hit with three. I get plus one to wounds. So we're doing on twos. Oh no. Only one AP zero now because of your ability. On a three. Got it. Crisis suits taking it all. Exalted eight bound time. Lone Exalted kills just one suit. That was a rough combat. It's not enough for capture enemy outpost, unfortunately. That was big. That was huge. I mean, blocked you off there. Yavara's gonna try to squish another berserker. Uh, one. That's a wound. No way. Squishes another one. Six plus feel no pain. Squish no way. One. Can you kill it? One command point on Skull for the Skull Throne. He's gonna get plus one to wound on the Yavara. Only two wounds managed and one save. He's out of command points. I am down to six wounds remaining. That's a problem. Steven's discarded capture enemy outpost for command point. Defense stronghold is ongoing. It's 32-31 at the end of turn three. Blessings of Corn this turn are feel no pain and plus two to move. Interesting choice. Next pulled behind enemy lines and secure no man's land. Both are a stretch, but they're doable. An interesting draw. I think they're achievable. What is it gonna cost me to score these objectives in terms of killing power? I see a way that I can achieve both my secondaries, but I need both command points. I need a four. Yeah. I got it. Okay. Two command points. Extra command point from supply lines definitely gonna help him. The Yavara has to take a battle shock test. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Do it with the other unit first if they're the same. Because he's in combat. Battle shock test on his Pathfinders. If they fail, it really dictates if he's going to spend or not on his next one. Eight to seven. Yes, I got it. And there it is. One command point on the insane bravery for the Yavara to pass automatically. That's what we call turning CP into VP. Five victory points for one command point is the way. 42 to 31 in favor of Nick. So that is the epitome of trade, CP for VP. As you always say. I should get it on a shirt. You really should actually. That'd be a really good shirt. I will engage the Nova Boost ability on the Yavara, which means this movement goes to 18 for this round. Once per game ability. In the move base, I'm then gonna move the stealth suits behind enemy lines, getting over there. Pathfinders need to move to get out of the way of the broadsides. So Pathfinders gonna move up, holding the objective, foregoing their heavy. The broadsides are gonna have to move up because I need them to go into the objective potentially. Then the Yavara is gonna fall back and he can fall back and shoot still. Yavara moves to mid table, Farsight moving into support. Shadow Sun coming in as well. Ready for the shooting phase? No. We're gonna start with this unit back here. All right, so this is this is a risky play here. I'm splitting fire to try to kill everything. Commander on the eight bound and the two crisis suits into the Lord Avocado. Fire Knife suits now, Shadow Sun guiding them into Lord Invocatus, so the commander is into the Exalted 8-bound, unguided, and he misses them all! 8-bound's alive. Not good. All right, the other two into the Lord Avocado. Plasma Rifles. Hits them both this time. What's minus one because they're in combat? Only one hit. Not enough to wound. Suits into Lord Invocatus only manage two wounds. The Stealth Suits are going to guide the Yavara into the Exalted. Yavara into the Exalted 8-bound, kills two, leaves one under wound. The Stealth Suits are gonna fire everything into Berserkers. Stealth Suits into the Berserkers and Steven Boxcars to feel no pain. Still only one dead Berserker. You didn't kill them both. Oh no, I didn't kill them both. This is Blood Surge time. I'm moving three. Blood Surging into the Pathfinders. Now my broadsides, they're gonna shoot everything at the Rhino. Hope it explodes and kills your guy. Four railgun shots, three hits. Rerolls twin links. That is three wounds at minus four. And one is a devastating wound. Do you ignore cover? You do, so I don't get any safe. Uh, these are all D6 plus one. Yeah. 15 wounds. Do I explode? No. 
And then because it's my only chance to take that objective away from you, because you're likely gonna kill those guys in combat, I have to spend one command point, my last one, do a normal move sure. to get on the objective. Torchstar Gambit for one command point, Nick's out of command points, but he gets more on that objective to hold it. Pathfinders that can support twice are gonna support Farsight shooting into that last eight bound there. Two shots from his plasma gun, hits them both. Wounds once. One save. I'm okay. That's all my shooting. I gotta charge you. Farsight. Okay, so you need a six. That's a nine. Farsight is in. That's a big play. All right, if I kill them, I take the objective. Four dice, hitting on twos. Farsight kills the Exalted 8-bound. Surprise, Steven didn't heroically intervene there. However, he has command points to do more work if he needs in the fight phase. And then it's ongoing combat. I'm gonna go over there. Exalted only kills one wound as Nick has that minus one incoming AP from the commander. I might as well go with these guys next. Pile in and hit ya. He's got six wounds left. He's got three. I might as well do the eight bound. There's a chance that I kill him. There is if I roll like that. Two wounds. He's okay. <laughs> that was fun though. So I'm gonna go over here now. Berserkers into the Pathfinders. Oh, needs two. Command re-rolling for one command point down to one and that's dead Pathfinders. I still hold the objective though. Over there in the car's time. I'm gonna spend a CP here to get plus one to wound. One command point on Lord Invocatus for the Skull Throne, looking for the dev wounds, but neep. Four ups, save two, one of them. And then the devastating wound will then kill him. He's damaged two, one crisis you did. Oh, you got a few extra attacks. Enforcer suit dies. <laughs> that is a massive turn. That would have stopped five points from you. That sucks. So I did manage to score both my seconders. Nick scores three behind enemy lines, five secure no man's land to take him up to 50 points. And Steven finishes defense stronghold to go to 34. What an incredibly tight game, folks. Here we go. Steven's turn four now, no prisoners and overwhelming force. These are potentially both scorable. All I need to do is kill the Avara and also Farsight. If I can do that, I'm gonna score all the points for overwhelming force and no prisoners. This is gonna be a very big turn for me. Extra command point is gonna help him too. The Berserkers have failed Battleshock, but the eight bound are okay. 10 points on primary for Steven, 50 to 44 for Nick. Invocatus moving to the middle to get some kills. Exalted eight bound camping on Nick's home objective. That lone Berserker moves out, tempting the Overwatch. No. Charge phase. Turn four charge phase. This is it for all the marbles, folks. The Berserker charges the Yavara, baiting the Overwatch. Not gonna Overwatch. And the Berserker is in. Jackals charge the Yavara and they fail. Invocatus into Farsight, he's in. Eight bound into both Farsight and the Yavara. So I'm gonna go first of all with Lord Invocatus. He's gonna put everything into Farsight. Invocatus into Farsight, no wounds from Invocatus. Oh no. Takes nothing, Farsight lives. That's well, quite unfortunate, isn't it? So yeah, I'm gonna put these three everything into him. For the Skull Throne, plus one wound, one command point left for Steven. Five attacks with the Lacerators. This is not good. <laughs> Twos. Two saves, AP two. On fours again. Save one, one goes through. Three damage, three wounds remaining on Farsight. 14 attacks with the others. Oh, didn't roll that one. Reroll ones. 10 please. Minus two, so four ups. Two damage each, I'm guessing? Nope. Farsight is dead. That is two overwhelming force and no prisoners for Steven. And then finally, my last call is up. <laughs> Four attacks. He's gonna do, oh no, he's not gonna kill you. And he rerolls wounds because that unit's nearby and you're under half strength. One wound, please. Take it. Your attack's back. I've been smooshing a Berserker every turn with the Avara. Why change? Yeah. I hit you three times. With the Yavara, it's like weird. I wound you three times, no AP, but one wound does two damage. It kills every turn. OC here, four. Oh no. Yeah. That means we can test yeah. it. Yeah. Game state is interesting. Three points on overwhelming force, two points on no prisoners, gives him 24 secondary, 25 primary, 49 points. Nick sits at 30 secondary, 20 primary for 50, one point in it as we head to turn five. 
All right, turn five, the last turn of the game. I am up by you by one point. Blessings of the Blood God are advanced in charge as well as feel no pain. Honestly, I think they're two of the best. Next pull, the assassination and extend battle lines. Oh boy. I have to knock him off as many objectives as I can, and I gotta kill the character, and I gotta take my home objective back. Everything has to go exactly right. Battle shock test with the Yavara. We're good. Five points on primary for Nick. Takes him up to 55. All right, so moving face. Stealth suits. Yep. We move eight inches over here to be in range of here. We got 18 inch range guns. His broadsides move up to get some shots. The Avara falls back. It can still shoot because of battle suit. And then Shadow Sun can still see you. Shooting phase. It's all down to this one. This is the important one. So I'm going to do this first in case I need to reroll. Shadow Sun's going to fire everything at this guy down here. Fire. Two fusion blasters. Both hit. They strength 11 at this range. One wound. Oh, don't roll the five. Oh, God. D6 plus two. Eight oh. damage. I'm very dead. Then I spend one command point on Torch Star's Gambit. Do a normal move, taking me onto the objective. Boom! It works. I got the objective. One objective is scored. Now I gotta kill the Lord Invocatus. Broadsides, shooting everything into Lord Avocado. Being guided by the Vera. Lord Invocatus, all you need to do is stay alive. Broadsides being guided into Lord and Vakatis. Oh, what a horrendous roll. Oh, no. Yes! Take 11 damage. I failed that with ultimate style as yeah. well. I'm dead. Assassinate for five. Lord and Vakatis is dead. Can I kill the jackals? Stealth suits. The Meltas are out of range. Hitting on fours. Not bad. Winning on threes. Two, three, four. No minus. We'll go through five up Gunner Pains. Three dead. Good drones. It's you none. Well, lastly, the Yavara. The Yavara targets the Jackals and kills them all. Jackals down? It's just the eight bound left. And that is all my shooting. I am not going to charge you. That looks like it's going to be it for Nick's scoring. He gets five on Assassinate, five on Extend Battle Lines, 65 49 as we head into Steven's turn five. Can he do it? I still hold my home, so I don't get another. He's pulled extend battle lines and area denial. Really, kill the Yavara, win the game. I'm gonna charge. I'm gonna overwatch. I thought you might. <laughs> the drones fire. Yeah. I hit once with the drone. And I wound once with the drone. Damage? Two damage. Six ups. Takes two. Flechette launcher. Nothing. Flamer. So on threes. That plus one strength is really coming into play here. Eight and minus two. Five ups. Decent. Fill no paint. Six ups. You've killed two models. Overcharging. D6 plus one shot. Seven oh. shots. How do you do it, Nick? Six. No sixes. You've got one guy left. Can you do four wounds? You charge in. I've got him down to one eight bound left. I just need to weather the attacks from one measly guy. Command point on for the Skull Throne. If the Yavara dies, oh. that's the game. This combat? is 15 points for you. With my lacerators. Here we go. Right, well I'm gonna CP reroll. Four hits. I'm strength 10, your toughness. Nine. I get plus one to wound. So oh, two. two. Four. AP two, flat three damage. Four ups. I gotta pass three of them. I fail two. So that's six damage. And he dies. Next, last command point in the reroll saving throw fails. Does he explode? <laughs> Here we go. Oh, it's so close! Because he does D6 mortal wounds. <laughs> you kill him. He's already gone and done it! What absolute legend! That's gonna be 10 points on secondary with 10 points on primary, which is 20 points to his 49, 69, 65 with paint. Your winner, ladies and gentlemen, 79 to 75, Steven Box! Bottom of five to win the game. What an absolutely fantastic knockdown, drag out, slobber knocker of a battle. Yeah, you won it. Nice game, buddy. Woo! Close. That was an awesome oh, game. Well done. Oh, yes. Finally. Oh, for the skull throne.
to just sell gloves. Just down to one guy. What an absolute amazing game. That was an epic game. I loved it. Having Steven in the studio is always fun. This new Tau Codex, I love it. It's fun, it's dynamic. I'm super happy to finally win some victory dice. But that aside, the most important thing about this game was that Nick has been an incredible opponent. We've just had a world of fun. And regardless whether I win or lose, I'm not gonna forget this game because it was absolutely epic. Woo! Finally, finally. Victory dice. Thank you so much for watching. What a fantastic fight that was. Nick, Steven, great battle, gentlemen. Absolutely loved it. Big thanks as well to this episode's sponsor, Combat Cards. If you like your Warhammer on the go, anywhere you have a mobile device you can play, plus you can play on Steam and on Google Play. I personally love Combat Cards and have played it for a heck of a long time. I highly recommend you check it out. And a big thanks to you, of course, for watching. If you like what we do, please like, subscribe, and share, and all that wonderful stuff, and tell your friends about us, or if you're feeling like it, please consider supporting us through YouTube membership or Patreon. You'll get exclusive releases, as well as behind-the-scenes interviews, early access to most of our shows, and access to our Discord, the most happening 40k community around. Well, that's it for all of us here at the Play On Studios. On behalf of everyone, it's JT The Voice saying... Until the next time you see us in the far-flung future of a grimdark universe, play on!